Coming up on Diverse Long Island, a community fed up with violence. How Suffolk police are responding in the wake of several murders in Huntington Station. Plus, the introduction of Ebola here in the U.S. spawning a disturbing new phenomenon called Ebola racism. And the Knicks giving kids in Roosevelt a court they can be proud to play on. Those stories and more next. Welcome to this edition of Diverse Long Island. I'm Alicia Lavencher. In the last few months, the rise of the so-called Islamic State has also led to an uptick in anti-Islamic sentiment around the world. Public outrage was widespread when two American prisoners were beheaded, and the acts of ISIS are indeed horrific. But some have used the violence in the Middle East to justify blanket statements against all Muslims and the religion of Islam. Joining me now to speak about the issue of Islamophobia is attorney Omar Chowdhury, who serves on the board of the Nassau chapter of the New York Civil Liberties Union. Omar, thank you so much for coming in. Before we begin, I want to show the audience an encouraging clip of a social experiment in Canada. It was filmed just days after a lone wolf gunman went on a shooting spree in Ottawa. You know, are you planning on taking the bus? Yeah. Um, I'd suggest that you take another ride then. Why? Um, well, look at how he's dressed. So what? So you know what? You can't stereotype and judge people by their clothes or their well, nationality or anything else. You know what I mean? What happened there, it was an incident of, of fanatics. It was awful and tragic. Right. But I don't think that's any reason to persecute someone just because of what they're wearing. Well, he could be armed with explosives. So could I. Yeah, As he a could matter of fact, I used to blow things up. Okay. And I'm but. not of any religious sect. I so, Omar, those people in the video you can see, they were standing up for the actor dressed in the traditional religious clothing. But recent reports in Great Britain show that they've seen a spike in anti-Muslim attitudes, and they've also seen a spike of crimes in the country. So, how do you think that experiment would play out here on the island and say maybe Huntington or Hicksville or, or Mineola? Well, uh, I have a lot of confidence in my fellow Long Islanders. I do believe that we are uh, a more educated and more respectable members of the world community. So I think it would play out exactly the same. I think you would have people talking about how bad it is to stereotype mm -hmm. and how to make the proper uh, judgments upon people, which is based on, you know, the content of their character. Now, public is, is one situation, and online can be a completely different scenario. People feel more emboldened when they have this, you know, on anonymity. They're maybe feeling more inclined to give true feelings, bigots even, saying how they really feel. Do you think this would play out differently online with hate speech? Well, we have to remember, like, a very small segment of the population uh, actually engage in hate speech and they're actually just disproportionately represented on the online uh, community forum. So I do believe that people who engage in hate speech aren't representative of the overall Long Island community. What do you think their goal is? Do you think they're actually trying to get an audience or they're simply just spouting out whatever feelings they may hold inside? Um, you know, I, I do sympathize with those people who engage in hate speech. I understand they have emotional issues and unfortunately what happens is their emotional issues are translated into fear of something that's unfamiliar, fear of something that's strange. And in this day and age, um, Muslims are a newcomer. We are kind of different. We are kind of strange, but I can assure you that we are proud Americans and we love the Constitution like any other American does. Now, online campaigns are also being used to push back against the ideology of ISIS. Here's a look at one video put together by a group from London. The ISIS do not represent Islam or any Muslim. Because it's totally un-Islamic. Because you're killing innocent people. Because you're unjust. We must all unite together and try to stop this group from damaging Islam and damaging Muslims. Not in my name. So you have those young people who are fighting ISIS propaganda with a viral video of their own. And, but when ISIS first started grabbing headlines, some called on Muslim leaders to actually denounce the group. And many have actually done so, but with very little news coverage. Do you think it's fair to ask that of Muslims here in the U.S.? Well, I mean, we would denounce it whether or not someone asked us to, to or not, because you have to understand that we are also very concerned about uh, groups that somehow claim to use Islam uh, to further their political ends. I feel that ISIS is a type of uh, fascist group. 
Uh, you can analyze it more in political terms. And I feel that ISIS uh, needs to be denounced. And I denounce it. Every Muslim that I know has denounced it. And I am hoping that our president, uh, President Obama, and uh, his military uh, team can handle this problem as effectively as possible. I'm curious, how often do these sort of conversations even come up within the Muslim community? Should we be taking a stand against it? Should we keep silent? I mean, do you and your friends or your family even have these kinds of conversations? Um, I think everyone does, um, whether they admit to it or not. Uh, what I would like to point out is um, I am always ready to denounce fanatics. I feel that fanatics have no place in the 21st century. This is a century that we've learned that we're world citizens. Uh, the world is a place of inclusion. The world should not exclude anyone. The world, in the world, no one religion should dominate any other religion. No one political party should dominate any other political party. No one nation should dominate any other nation. So I believe as citizens of the world, mm -hmm. We need to denounce any group that's fanatical or feels like they can exclude, harm, or kill others. Now, do you think news coverage of ISIS is maybe contributing to this Islamophobia because it's those extremists who tend to have the loudest voices and garner the most attention? Well, I, I would like to point out um, the people who fear and hate Islam, they also have emotional issues that they need to deal with. So the news coverage is not going to be the cause. Just like Islam is not the cause of terrorism, news coverage is not the cause of Islamophobia. I believe that they have emotional issues. These are issues of insecurity, uh, stubborn self-assurance, uh, a narrow mindset. Now, if, w if they're able to develop as human beings and to become respected members of the world community, they wouldn't have those views. And I am sympathetic. I hope they get the treatment they need, and I hope all fanatics get the treatment they need. But I do believe that to be a member of the world's citizenship, you requires a open mind, respect for others, and concern for humanity as a species, not just your ethnic group. Great perspective. Thank you so much, Omar Chowdhury of the New York Civil Liberties Union. We'll have to leave it there. We'll be right back after this.